Hello and welcome to video four for week one. In this video, we're going to talk about the absolute and conditional convergence of certain series, and in particular look at the properties of the alternating harmonic series, which turns out to be quite fascinating and strange. An alternating series is a series where the terms alternate between positive and negative. So I have some numbers a n, which are positive or zero, and then I have this negative one to the n, and this is our typical notation for indicating an alternating plus minus. If n is even, this is this is one, this is um, positive. If n is odd, this is negative one, this is negative. So I get this alternating from this negative one to the n. These are called alternating series. You might remember in the test for divergence, we had that if the limit as n goes to infinity of a n is not equal to zero, we have divergence. The contrapositive of that is not true in general. If the limit of the term is equal to zero, we don't know whether or not the series converges. And the harmonic series was the classic example there. Harmonic series 1 over n. The terms do go to zero, but the series still diverges. So for general series, we can't use the limit of the terms as a test for convergence. We can only use it as a test for divergence. For alternating series, the situation is much nicer. For alternating series, the thing we wanted to be true for all series is in fact true. An alternating series converges if and only if its terms go to zero. So all you have to do to test the convergence of an alternating series is take the limit of the terms. If that limit is zero, it converges. If that limit is not zero, it diverges. This is called the alternating series test. So not only are they interesting class of series, they're a very reasonable and easy series to test convergence. All right, let's talk about the alternating harmonic series, and I'll put it up over here since we're going to talk about it for the rest of the video. So this is like the harmonic series, except for I have an alternating plus one minus one, and I want to start with a positive. So I have negative one to the n plus one, so that the odd terms are positive and the even terms are negative. So that gives me positive odd terms, one one third, one fifth, one seventh, and negative even terms, negative one half, negative one quarter, negative one sixth negative one eighth and so on and I alternate adding these up together. The limit of these terms is zero. Um, these fractions are getting smaller they do in fact approach zero so by the alternating series test this does indeed converge. Um, I'm not going to prove it here we can prove it using techniques that will develop in week two but you can actually prove that the value of this this converges to the number natural logarithm of two which is in and of itself an interesting result. Now I want to rearrange the terms of the alternating harmonic series. I had these positive terms with odd denominators, and I had these negative terms with even denominators. And before I alternated them, one minus a half plus a third minus a quarter plus a fifth minus a sixth. Here I'm going to do two positives and then a negative, and then two positives and then a negative, and then two positives and then a negative. And I still have one, one third, one fifth, one seventh, one ninth, one eleventh. I still have all of those positive terms with odd denominators, and I have a half, a quarter, a sixth. I still have those even terms with uh, negative terms with even denominators. And since this goes off infinitely, I'm not going to miss any numbers, any positive or negative numbers. They'll be somewhere down that list somewhere. So this is the same terms. They're just rearranged. But now. In between this, I could subtract a half and add a half and put that in here. I could subtract a quarter and add a quarter. Um, I could subtract a quarter and subtract a quarter, and that would add up to this one half. I could subtract a six and add a six. That would cancel off and be a zero between here. I have negative one eighth, negative one eighth, and have negative one quarter here. And repeating the same way, I could write this as two pieces. This piece looks like the original harmonic series, and this piece looks like it has all even denominators. But if I factored a one half out of this piece, I would have one minus a half plus a third minus a fourth. I would have another copy of the alternating harmonic series. So this piece is just the alternating harmonic series. This piece, if I factor out one half, I get another alternating harmonic series. And I know the alternating harmonic series adds up to long two, so one half of it adds up to one half ln two. So this adds up to three halves ln two. Now this is strange. 
because I said the terms up here were exactly the same, but I now have a different sum. How is that possible? How can I rearrange the terms and suddenly come up with a different number? Turns out, for the alternating harmonic series, you can do this. Different rearrangements of the alternating harmonic series give different values. We talk about this in general. The alternating harmonic series has its odd terms and its even terms, its positive terms and its negative terms. And there's a general proof, which I'll do in more detail in the notes, but which I'll sketch the idea of in this video, that if you want to add up to a certain value using the alternating harmonic series, you'll add positive terms until you get to that value. Then you'll add negative terms until you get below that value. So we'll go up, and then we'll add negative terms when we get below, and then we'll add more positive terms when we get above, and then we'll add more negative terms when we get below, and then we'll add more positive terms when we get above, and then we'll add more negative terms when we get below. And as I go down these lists, the numbers get smaller and smaller, so I get closer and closer to the thing I want to get to. And I can approach any number this way. You want to reach a certain number? Oh, I keep adding positive terms until I get above it. I keep adding negative terms until I get below it. And these terms themselves, if I just added up the positive terms, it would add up to infinity. If I just added up the negative terms, it would add up to negative infinity. So I do have enough terms so I can get above or below any value I want. So in this sense, there is an arrangement of these terms that adds up to actually anything you want. And this is, this is the strangeness of infinite series. I have the same terms. I have exactly the same collection of numbers. But depending on how I arrange them in an infinite series, I can make them add up to whatever I want. That's very odd. And maybe you're comfortable with that. Maybe you're like, all right, that's what these things do. Maybe you're not comfortable with that. And this is, this is where we get into some metamathematical mathematical discussion of, well, what does this mean about our definitions? This, does this mean our definitions are good? Does this mean our definitions are bad? Is this just how infinity works? Or is this nonsense and we need a better definition of infinity? And lots of discussion and, and, and ideas and debate over the centuries about whether or not this is a good thing. This is standard practice now. This is what the majority of the conventional mathematical community accepts as the behavior of infinity. And we have things like the alternating harmonic series, which we can add up to whatever we want by rearranging the terms. Let me give you a general definition before we end here. Um, a series is called absolutely convergent if I take the series and I make everything positive if it still converges. If it doesn't have this, it's called conditionally convergent. And if I look over here at the alternating harmonic series, which I've left on the, uh, the top left of the, the screen. This is a conditionally convergent series, because if I take the absolute value, I get the harmonic series, and the harmonic series diverges. And it's a theorem that every conditional convergent series, in fact, has this strange behavior that rearrangements of it add up to different values.